Previously on Two Up and Overloaded. The sun was setting on a fantastic road through the jungle mountains of Kalimantan, the Indonesian side of Borneo. It's a place that few people ever get to see, and its roads are remote. There are few towns and even fewer hotels. But we had a hotel in mind for that evening. But the, this, we were about half an hour away from the hotel on our little map that we had plugged in on our Google Maps. And the sun was just starting to get into that golden hour. And it looked like we were going to reach the town just as the sun was setting. It was going to be perfect, yeah. we thought. Now, we usually don't book hotels before we just show up in the town. And that is because you never know what's going to happen in the day. No. We've been traveling all over the world and doing this for many, many years and it's usually never a problem. Yeah. In fact, I find it to be an asset to be so flexible. Sometimes you get to a hotel and you're like, yep, yeah, nope, this is not yeah. where we're gonna stay, you know? Yeah. And it's a real nice quick turnaround. But we figured we'd just show up. Like there's no, this isn't like a hotspot tourist area, so we figured we'd right. just drive there, you know, no, no issues, we didn't need to book. Exactly, just like we had done all throughout the rest of Indonesia. Yeah. But... But little did we know, Indonesia <laughs> has like a major holiday or festival like every weekend. Yes. The only times where this has ever been a problem are very, very popular sites with tourists. But we were in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this was a very remote section of road. Yes, there was really only this one hotel in this one town. But yeah. I mean, who was going to be booking up this yeah. hotel? I mean, there was one hotel because they never have more than the 16 guests ever needed, you know? Exactly. <laughs> This is the story of how a beautiful ride through incredible scenery ended in a dangerous situation, and it was all our own fault. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa No Tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places, places we'll go. go through rain and through sleet and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun, fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to join us along our epic ride. Finally, just as we pulled into town, like the sun had just gone beneath one of these, you know, uh, little hills in the, in the landscape. Little hotel, bright lights, really excited. I parked a bike. Marissa Perfect. ran inside. And then I got the bad news. Yeah, by the time I had parked a bike and, and walked up the stairs. I was already shaking my head. The person at the front desk of the hotel informed me that they are fully booked. And there was another place in town to stay, but they were also fully booked. Yeah, there was some kind of like festival going on, like right yes. next door. When we pulled up, I was like, cool, a little night market. We get to go and check things out. It was actually an indigenous festival, which sounded really awesome, but we had a priority in that moment and that was finding a place yeah. to sleep. We actually went around town and kind of just asked local people, like, is there any place that we can stay? Anyone that we can pay for a room? And They're they, like, nope. yeah, yeah, they said, look, you're gonna have to go 40 minutes to the next town. Yeah. And that town is called Sandai and you hopefully will be able to find a hotel that's available there. And there's nothing, there, you know, there's no options. Just plug it in the map. Yeah. Hit the directions, let it populate and press go start and we got on Thorco and, and we headed into into the blackness. So we went to the little town that we had on our map. Wanna 
two hotels there and there's some kind of festival so no room for us and as you can see the sun has set but we got another 40 minutes and thank gosh I have my one little power light to give me some more light but I think the other lights don't work. Oh, there they go. Oh, yeah, now they're on. So, here we go. Oh. <laughs> Into the darkness. Into the darkness. The jungle is just dense and absorbs light and you know it, does. it was just really really dark so dark even darker yet because of our my my headlights were malfunctioning <laughs> on me and so it's like of I, course i get this like one view of like this dot and like the, it's off center so like <laughs> ahead of me all i can see is like the tree up to the left you know and i'm like i want to see the road that would be much more convenient than like this lazy eye of a headlight and i remember the headlight kept flickering out and you're like wait i don't know how to keep it on and there were a bunch of switches there's some auxiliary switches <laughs> this thing is like i don't know dorco is our motorcycle it's what we've named our motorcycle and it is a bajaj pulsar 220 it's a bit old and it does have auxiliary lights but not all of it really functions no, not, properly. no not at all and in general we always try to not ride a motorcycle yeah. at night that is a very dangerous situation no matter where you are it's a lot darker it's a lot harder for people to see you on the road um, there's critters i mean we yeah. in that part of the world it's very rare but there's like elephants you know little pygmy yes. elephants there's pygmy rhinos yes pygmy everything they're wandering around <laughs> you know there's cattle but usually they're like tied off but you know there's dogs there's and dogs. cats and snakes and monitor lizards and just thinking <laughs> and pangolins and, and <laughs> yeah potholes that are just everywhere yes. those are the scary things because dorco is not there's no absorption to that thing. And the worst part about it was that we were passing some traffic that had their headlights on, but we noticed that there was some traffic, some motorcycles and some cars that did yeah. not have headlights. Like 40% of them. And everybody <laughs> yeah. cruises down the middle of the road in order to avoid all the, the pygmy elephants and potholes and yeah. stuff. <laughs> you know? And so here I am like flickering in and out of existence with the, the headlight of Darko and other cars and stuff without headlights, and it was just a bad scenario all, all across. Yeah, it was pretty much worst case scenario for riding at night. We wish we had our ruby lights yeah. from back in the States so badly because those lights are super bright and they really are lifesavers. It was such a shame that we didn't have them and all we had was whatever Dorco had. <laughs> this is true. But we did pull into that town but there were some restaurants and there's some hotels yes there was a hotel right there called starlet hotel and we were like oh please please fingers yeah. crossed hopefully they have a room for we us we were wishing on our lucky starlets <laughs> yes we were and uh, the staff was friendly they did give us a room without a window that pretty much was like a basement room yeah but we were so grateful Oh my goodness, we made it. We made it to a hotel that had a hotel room available. It was so exciting. It's never fun to ride at night. Tim did an awesome job. He was able to figure out the lights and everything on the motorcycle. I'm just happy that we have arrived safe and sound and we can relax now and maybe have some dinner and call this day done. Whew. And when we got into our hotel room, it seemed a little poltergeisty. Yes. So this is our yeah. hotel room in Borneo. There's a bunch of like creepy sounds. Yeah. It's happening again. <laughs> yeah. It's like poltergeist. Like we're in a Blair Witch Project. You <laughs> took it over my alien. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're safe. This is our room in Borneo. This is our room in Borneo. 
It was more like, uh, what's her name from Stranger Things? The mom, like talking to the upside oh, yeah. down. The lights would flicker and it was like this. There was definitely a ghost involved. It was definitely some pretty crazy stuff. And then the lights just went. All right, we're safe. It but we crazy. had nowhere else to go. We, we risked a certain doom. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> When you're in just like a cellar and you wake up, you have no idea if it's like, oh, I had to wake up at three o'clock in the morning because I had to use the bathroom, or is it quite, quite possibly, you know, noon? I have yeah. no idea. We always wake up super late, like, no, yeah. <laughs> how did this happen? Yeah. Check these fruits out. They're called snake fruit, or at least in English, that's kind of what their translation is, and it makes perfect sense because they have snake skin and they look like dragon eggs really awesome look at that and it's hard like the scales of a snake inside when you peel it off it's white and it has a strange smell it almost looks like garlic cloves um, and a strange taste which I'm not too much a fan of so I'm not going to be eating this one but uh, it does look really really cool <laughs> Thankfully, once we got on the road, we realized that this part of Kalimantan was not quite as remote as what we had just ridden through. There were a few more towns, a few more people. Our day was going to end in the river town of Tajan, which is only another day's ride from the big city of Pontianak. Yeah. So we were really making some good progress and covering a lot of distance. We interrupted scheduled programming for a quick commercial break. If you guys like following us along, for as little as a dollar a month, you can hop on our Patreon. Uh, you get to look at all of our like exclusive little videos that we make as we're traveling around, which are kind of jump ahead of yeah. where we are on the YouTube. So there's some exclusives. And it's all ad-free. It's all ad-free. But we do want to thank all of our patrons out there, our current members. You help make this magic come true. And you as well could help support us for as little as a buck. So check out our Patreon link in the description below. We were starting to get some really cool, out of nowhere, juts of the earth that popped up, all covered in forest. Like, you know, it reminds me of like Vietnam or yes. you know, faraway places that I haven't been to yet. And now here I am starting to inch into the part of the world where this weird natural phenomenon landmarks exist. Yeah, just these mountains in the distance that were getting closer and closer and they were like these jagged limestone spires just spurting up. So we stopped at this little place because it's right across from like the best view ever. Look at this mountain, it's amazing. So we had a very memorable stop at a little place for refreshments. She got some coffee, she got some tea. Yeah, and it was right across the street from a beautiful view. We kind of had passed this mosque and this beautiful view going Dorco speed, you know, we were <laughs> cruising like light speed. <laughs> and I was like, wait, I think I saw something cool I'm going 13 miles an hour. So we turned around and we pulled into this little mom and pop shop and we got to talk with this lovely woman. She was super duper nice. This is Puri. Kenji and her daughter, Kena. Say hi! If I learned anything from Sam Manicom, you know, he says all the time, like, throughout the day when you're traveling, just pull over every half hour to hour, mm -hmm. even if you need to or not, but absorb the moment, take a couple pictures, you get some cool experiences, you meet amazing people, 
It's just all really beneficial. Right next door is a little motorcycle workshop. And uh, while we were on our jungle cruise to see the orangutans, someone must have bumped our motorcycle. The little turn signal on the right hand side was knocked out of place. I'll show you here. One thing we had noticed is that one of our turn signals had, it's the Frankenstein bolt turn signal thing had a droopy yeah. eye, it had a lazy eye now. I think the bike had gotten knocked over. It was almost totaled. Because oh. it was like, <laughs> if anything more than like 10, 20 bucks to fix it, it's like, I don't know, we just saw the loss <laughs> at this point. Take the off so oh. we can actually put it on. There was a little mechanic next to us and we figured maybe we'd, we'd give her a little, a day spa as we were drinking yes. our coffee and looking at our drone. <laughs> the mechanic looked at the turn signal and was like, yeah, I can fix it. And Tim had already tried to fix it. I had some super glue and some Gorilla tape <laughs> and I was like, I got this, you know, and I didn't get it. No, we were a bit like, I don't, I don't think he has all the right things to fix it. But... No, all of that will be in the next episode yes. and future episodes. <laughs> It's a reoccurring theme. Fixing Dorco. Yeah, we is now <laughs> called The Adventures of Tim, Rissa, and Dorco going to different mechanics. <laughs> Bye. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Double ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. I mean, part of the luxury of not booking anything is because we're free flowing. Freewheeling. Two wheeling. Travelers. Bam. Yes. Yeah, High new five hashtag. To that. Hashtag <laughs> that. Get that trending. I was like Luke Skywalker. And Marissa was like, use the force. <laughs> use the force. And so I just closed my eyes. And, no. <laughs> no. I just followed the little blue line on Google Maps. So I was like, well, it's pretty accurate. I think yeah. there's a turn up here. <laughs> and hopefully you had your eyes on the road too. I had my eyes on my phone because there was, <laughs> there was more, no. more information there than what was ahead of just a pitch blackness. Oh my goodness.